Shalom, Ahab, Wa, Maraka. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Raka, Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles, the prophets, and the teachers at GMS that have been bringing up this 100% truth for the last 30 plus years. Let's get it. All right, this is another message for the Christians. So, I noticed that you guys still don't get it. It's like everything that was written in this Bible, you have an opposite stance on. So, let's just get right into it. We're going to start with Mark chapter 4 and verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So, and, and, that, and that's every Christian. Oh God, all I knew was that, that, that God knows my spirit and God loves me and God is all love. Where in the hell did you get that? I mean, the prophets have told you repeatedly that God loves and hates. He's a perfect balance. And yes, he, not, oh, she is all love. No, God is a man of war. In fact, let's not hold out. Let's get it. Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Now, let me read it the correct way. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. So he is a man and he is a man of war. So that whole, oh, God's all love. I just destroyed that in like one sentence. This shows that you guys aren't doing nothing right. In fact, you guys take the word and you receive it with joy and gladness when you've heard it. But wait, there's more to it. Because once we tell you that everything about your doctrine is wrong and you have to study, you can't just make up definitions for words. You guys have to do things a certain way to be verified in the truth. You know what? I'm gonna, um, I have to get this really quick. It goes right with uh, Mark uh, 4 and 16. So let's get it. This is Luke 8 and 13. And this is the New Living Translation. Why? Because I love it so much. It's, it's such a great Bible right now. There's a lot of good breakdowns in the NLT. So I suggest um, it, it, uh, for, for um, educational purposes, it is a good book to have, but you're gonna find out that not everything that it says is right. But right now, it's gonna it's it's doing really good. Luke eight and thirteen. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. Okay, you are sown on stony ground, but since they don't have deep roots, you refuse to study. You refuse to be serious and. Um, I, how would you say it? Diligent in your studies, so you're not deep rooted in it. They believe for a while, then when they fall away, but then they fall away when they face temptation. And that goes, and that's perfect because you're always saying that God knows my spirit, God loves me. No man's perfect. We're all sinners. Well, we are all sinners, but you guys will literally go out and do the most horrific shit, and then act like, oh, it's forgivable. Well, if you repent, it is. But to be a repeat offender and then go repent, that's the whole reason why the daily sacrifice was taken away in the first place. Because you guys would be like, oh, I can, I can do this. I just got to go ahead and just repent later. I can repent later. You can't repent later. If your sin... Knowingly, if you sin knowingly, there's no more room for repentance. Let's get that too, because you can't say I'm going to repent later. So let's go to um, the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and 26 in the King James Version. For if we sin willingly, that means you know that you're sinning. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. We're out here teaching it on a daily basis. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You can't repent. You can't, you can't be out here, oh, I know it's a sin, and you know, I'm gonna repent later. No, the most times be like, no, you knew it was a sin. You're out here, you're you're dirty. You're you got a dirty mind. 
You think that you can just go out and do whatever you want and then come back to the most high? Huh. There's scripture for that too. There's a scripture for that too. But um, we're, we're going to stick to the point here. Let's we'll stick to the point. The point is, is that Christians don't study the Bible. So when they hear that God is all love and all of these lies, the, pro the, the production of lies through the Christianity doctrine is what the people love. They love that the lie that they're in. And so when you tell them the truth of the scriptures, what happens is, ugh, come on, of course, as soon as I want to look at something. So let's keep reading in Mark. This is Mark 4 and 17. I'm going to read 16 and 17 together. And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when um, have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So it's like, all right, the most high is with me. Well, maybe, maybe not. You have to be an Israelite. So right away, they're like, what? I'm, I, I, I'm not Israelite. I'm this, I'm that. I'm, 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 I'm. And then they start justifying bullshit because they didn't study the scriptures. So it sends you into confusion. And just like, like when you flush a toilet, you just start spinning in circles and then everything drops through. And that's kind of how the Christian lie is right now. It's all spinning around in circles and confusion. And then pretty soon the floor is going to come right out from under you guys. So we're just trying to help you. The reason why we even mess with Christians so much because you're reading our fucking Bible. And then you're trying to reinterpret it like you know it. That's why the Christians get uh, such a, um, a harsh rebuke. A sharp rebuke. Because you're in our book. Now the Muslims, we don't really mess with them too much. They don't read our book either. The, um, the Jewish people... They already know what they're, uh, they, they're making laws against us even being able to bring up their name anymore. So you Christians are always trying to read our book though, and you're trying to misinterpret it. So if you want to know the truth, it's like I said, it's, it's like how it's written. If they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them drink. But by doing so, you're going to serve them with hot coals. In other words, you guys get burned up inside as soon as you hear the truth of the Bible. Let me get it. This is Mark 4 and 16. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Okay, but wait, there's more. So yeah, that's you guys right when you hear it. Everybody's happy. We've all repented. And I, I got baptized. And the Lord knows my spirit now. So I, I'm, I'm saved through the blood of Christ. I said so. That's how. I'm saved. He that endureth until the end, that same shall be saved. We're not at the end yet. So, I mean, it's just that simple to destroy you. But let's go to Mark 4 and 17. And have, so immediately they receive it with gladness and 16 and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So afterwards, when affliction or persecution, sorry about that, I have a bug zapper. So when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, you are immediately, you are offended because you thought you could continue in your worldly life Telling everybody that God knows your spirit and you're just this great person because you've, in your own mind, accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. By the blood of Christ, I'm saved. It literally says that only Israel can be saved. But John 3 and 16 says, what does John 3 and 16 say? It said, Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to perish. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the funny thing is, is that you guys take this word world and you refuse, you refuse to go back to the origin of the word and its original text. Because it's not world, is it people? It's, it's cosmos. So what does cosmos mean? His government, <laughs> he loved his government so much. He loved his, um, his, um, let's, let's get it. Let's get it. Why, no, let, we don't want to paraphrase. We want to get this. So let, let me just pull it up real quick.
what is the biblical definition of cosmos? Um, there it is. An orderly, harmonious arrangement. So his orderly arrangement, his um, his his government, his his jewelry. So his cosmos is talking about who did he give the government to again? I can't remember who was it. Who is this book written about? That's right. I remember now. The Israelites. The Israelites only. They were the only ones that Moses sprinkled the blood over when he um, um, informed them of the, the laws, the statutes within the laws and the direct commands. And so everybody agreed to that. Remember? Me too. So, no. You're not a part of that in the beginning. So when you come all the way down here to the end, when you think that God loves you and all this, he doesn't. He's not even dealing with you. God hates sinners. In fact, um, God doesn't hear sinners. God don't like sinners. God hates sinners. Sinners will be put to death. I'll even get it in the New Testament for all of you, um, for you Christians. It's St. John chapter 9 and verse 31 See, this is how I know you don't read the Bible, because we're not going to any special, we're not going to the Apocrypha, we're not going to the Old Testament, we're going directly to where you Christians like to hear it the most, in the New Testament. And this is St. John, chapter 9, verse 31. Now, we know that Yahweh heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of Yahweh, and doth his will... Him, he heareth. And what is his will? When you're doing his will, it means you're following his instructions. Not saying that they're done away with. They're not done away with. See, this is why we can go right back to that first verse. They, they, they hear the word and they're immediately joyful and glad inside. But, what happens when persecution arises for the word's sake? They're going to what? They're going to be offended immediately. And there's a reason why they're offended too. Oh, man, this thing is pissing me off this morning. Stupid-ass computers, man. Never want to do what you want them to. As soon as you get excited to bring something out, this thing just goes crazy. So you're offended. And I'm going to read um, I'm going to read 18 and 19 also because it has everything to do with you Christians. And these are they which are sown among thorns. Such as hear the word and the cares of the world, there's your world, and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things coming in, entering in, Salakia, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So the reason why you guys say that the laws are done away with, because it, 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 you don't get to live that, that wicked ass lifestyle that you're so used to. It literally says... That, let me read it again for you so you can hear it. So, the cares of the world. The cares of the world enter in. So, those cares of the world are where you start justifying, telling everybody, God knows your spirit, I can repent. The cares of the world and deceitfulness of riches. When it comes down to it at the end of the day, 99% of people worship money. Even in the camps, man, if you're in a camp, if you're in a camp, you'll notice that the camp leaders are getting really rich. But you're in the same position. That should tell you right away, this ain't no real camp. The camp leader should be just like you from beginning to end. Look at Elder Apostle Tahar. He lives a, a, a basically a normal life. I don't know, I'm not part of his normal basic life, but for what he portrays on screen is... Uh, a person that is very humble and meek. Let's go to IUIC. Well, they got $150 million. You can't even speak to Bishop Nathaniel unless you say Bishop Nathaniel. And then you've got to be high enough up in the ranks to even speak to him. Does that sound normal to you guys? This guy is portraying himself as a God above all people. <laughs> He's not humble. 
He's not me. There's something wrong with that camera. If the camp is selling everything under the sun, you know what? There's really nothing wrong with selling stuff to keep the the flow going, but but um, I don't know, man. You guys might be taking it too far. You might be taking it too far. You wrote your own Bible. If you wrote your own Bible, that means that there were some things in the original Bible that you didn't like. You sound like a Christian. You sound just like the Christians. We got to get rid of Paul's writings. Well, the Christians want to get rid of the whole Old Testament, but then they still want to pick and choose verses out of the Old Testament to use. You guys are just like the Christians. In fact, all of you are. It's all about money and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in. They choke the word because you can't be in the truth and be in the lie. Either you go to the world or you go to righteousness. So, the, and, 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 the, and it chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. And so, worldliness will, it's like worldliness versus righteousness. It's a, your body's in a continuous spiritual warfare. And it's up to you to, to um, take heed of that. And, and you have to um, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself when you're going to, um, when, 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 when it's time for the uh, scriptures to come out. What do you mean prepare yourself? Well, when, when we're not at camp, we still study all day, every day. We take notes. We um, exercise ourselves in the Word. We're getting prepared for the next lesson. So, you Christians, it'd be, it, 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 I feel like I want to say it'd be so easy for you to just start following instructions, but clearly the Most High isn't going to let you do that. So, we're sending out final warnings to all these Christians and all of these heathens, all of these wicked-ass other nations, the, the Gentiles. All of you, anybody that isn't part of the kingdom, you're getting told. You're getting warned. And for all of my brothers and sisters that are part of the two-thirds, you're also being warned. You can't say that God is all love, that God's a woman, and then tell me that you're reading the Bible. Because that's not in the Bible. In fact, let me show you one more about God hating everybody. This is um, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 12. Now, this is the Apocrypha. They, th this is the Apocrypha, and I'm bringing it out because it's relevant. So, Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. For Yahweh hateth sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Give unto the good help, and help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, and an enemy cannot be hid in adversity. So, when those adverse times come, we're going to find out that you are truly just an enemy of the truth. Because you're a sinner. What, what makes you a sinner? Well, I would know not. I wouldn't know sin unless I was told. So, you were told right from wrong, and you refused it. And so, you know what sin is. That's why I'm saying you're a repeat offender. You can't just... Say, I'm going to repent, or God knows my spirit, or I'm saved by the blood of Christ. Let me get that, too. Let me get that, too. You can't be saved by the blood of Christ at this time. I, I'm i out here worried about my next move and my family, and we're actually bringing out classes. We're following instructions. We're praying in the Hebrew. I'm teaching my children every weekend uh, a class, and my wife, for the most part, on the weekday, she teaches classes Sometimes. So where we're doing, and we could be doing more. We could be doing more. Way more. So for you guys to just sit around eating pork, celebrating birthdays, Christmas, Easter, Father's Day, Mother's Day, etc., 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 everything against the scriptures, but God loves you, and he's going to pay me with revenge because I tried to teach you? Do you know how stupid you sound? This is the problem with Christians. You guys don't understand the Bible. 
So I'm just going to, I'm going to now start to become uh, redundant. So I'm going to go back to what I was originally saying in Mark. That's what this was. It's just a really short class because I just keep hearing people say that God's all love and, and um, we're a cult and we're not in the truth. And we're the liars, but you guys celebrate Christmas and it says not to. You guys celebrate Easter and Thanksgiving and Father's Day and Mother's Day and birthdays when it says not to. And then on top of that, you have programs in your Christian church supporting Christmas, supporting Easter, supporting Halloween. Sam Haynes' birthday, really the devil's birthday. Man, you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy. So let's go back to the original point. So when you guys hear the word, when you first heard it, you received it with gladness. And when you found out that you had to stop living this, this horrific worldly life, you, you were offended instantly. And so you forbeared the scriptures. What does forbear mean? You fell away from. Some of you are just straight up forbearers. To, to be a forbearer means you completely just reject it. And a lot of you do that, man. You hear the truth and you, how many people burn their Bibles when they found out Yahweh is black, which is written in the Bible all through it. All the prophets and the, um, all the, the, the elder apostles, the prophets, the teachers, they were all dark skin, melanated people. We were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And through that scattering, we started to look like the other nations as we intermingled with the other nations. But man, they burned their Bibles as soon as they found out he was black. Why didn't you just open it up and read it for yourself? It would have saved a lot of time, right? So um, with that being said, just kind of a a rant on these Christians. I just get tired of seeing it sometimes and I really try to avoid it. And this, this past week has been, uh, 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 how would you say, really tough, really tough. One of my uh, animals got bit by a rattlesnake and survived. So <laughs> it, it was, it's been a tough week so far. But um, I just want to remind everybody, Yahweh is not all love. And if you think that you're going to get in on that, uh, <laughs> think that you're going to get into the kingdom uh, on the um, whole thought, well, you know, God's all love. You're going to find out the hard way. Now, we've told you repeatedly to repent. I'm going to tell you one last time before I go. To repent means to stop sinning. So if you're eating pork, to repent from pork doesn't mean you'll eat pork sometimes. No, it means that you don't eat it at all. And then you beg for Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, to show mercy on you. That's repenting. But never going back to the pork. Because if you go back to the pork, now you're a repeat offender and you're you're knowingly sinning. You sin knowingly. So you gotta watch out for all that stuff. But um like I said, you Christians aren't going to change. We only go off on you because you're reading our book. And with that being said, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, I want you to remember this. God don't love everybody. And he definitely don't love you motherfuckers out there telling lies and changing the truth. So if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you got something out of this message. Shalom.